What is captivity? Why did they get taken out into captivity? For disobedience. For disobedience. Captivity, write this down, is discipline for disobedience. Bondage is discipline for disobedience. Are you hearing me? Bondage and captivity is discipline for disobedience. This is why they were taken away into captivity. This is why they gave up their rights when they chose to worship these false gods, when they chose to shed innocent blood, when they chose, when they chose, when they chose. The false prophets, why? Because the false prophets were telling them what they wanted to hear. The false prophets were speaking to their flesh. The false prophets were speaking to their souls that says, I want to live this dual life. And so they encouraged those false prophets to have dreams that were fake. So there's seven things in this scripture that we're going to dissect about where we're at right now. Jeremiah 29, 5 and 6, notice what he says. What he says is, settle down. Let's go back there. You should underline this all in your Bible. Build houses. Here's what happened. The false prophets, after they got taken into captivity, they did not want to unpack their bags because the false prophets were telling them, we're not staying long. Egypt is going to come and save us. They trusted in their allies, you know, their agreements, you know, the one world agreements. We're all going to be great friends. Everyone's going to protect each other. Hello, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Okay, so they trusted in their allies. Oh, no worries, man. Our friends are going to bail us out. We're going to be cool. Don't unpack. This is only for a little time. It's just a few days. It's cool. They're coming to get us. We'll be safe. That's what the Israelites wanted to hear. That's what the king wanted to hear. But guess how long they stayed? 70 years. 70 years in captivity. So check it out. He says, Jeremiah says, oh, no. <laughs> You're staying, buddy. <laughs> Unpack your stuff. <laughs> Build houses, plant gardens. Make some babies and have them babies. Make some babies. Going to be here for a long time. That's what he said. Settle down. Pack your, unpack. You're staying here. It's like this, my friends. Some of you are wondering right now, how do I know if I'm hearing a false word or a real word? Sometimes the blessings of God are completely obvious, and sometimes there's something in us that likes to fight them. Sometimes we fight the obvious. Why do we fight the obvious? How many of you have fought the obvious before? How many of you found out this morning that you fought a lot the obvious? Okay, you fight in the obvious. You know what direction you're supposed to go in, you don't want to go in that direction. It's because of fear and control. Fear and control is why we fight the obvious. We will either want the credit for the success when it comes, or we're afraid that it's really not going to work. And wherever there is fear, there is no faith. Wherever there is fear, there is no faith. You've got to have faith. Number point number two, Jeremiah 29, 7. So he's saying, settle down. You're staying here for a while. Number two is this. He says, seek the prosperity and the peace of the city. And as it prospers, so then will you prosper. Okay. Who is he asking them? He's asking them to pray for the city to prosper. He's asking for them to pray for their enemies that have held them captive. How many of you have a hard time with that? He's asking them to move their egos aside and pray. Look at, it, look at the key to the, their personal prosperity. What was the key to their personal prosperity? Praying for their enemies' prosperity was the key to their prosperity. Ah. He said, pray for the prosperity of the city, and as it prospers, so then shall you prosper. Listen to me carefully. Some of you work in an environment with a boss that you do not like. How many of you have that situation? And if you are coming against that headship, you will not be blessed. Did you hear me? If you come against that headship, you will not be blessed. But if you pray for that headship to be blessed as he prospers, so then shall you prosper. How many of you do not pray for your company's prosperity? The key to your prosperity in this season right now is for you 
to bless the area in which you are in, and as it prospers, so then shall you prosper. Here's the second point under point number two. He's saying, don't just seek your own prosperity. In fact, I want you to seek somebody else's prosperity before you seek your own. Oh, that stinks. Did you hear what I just said? Seek the prosperity of them first. And as they prosper, though, then will you prosper. Hear me out loud and clear. If you help other people get what they want, then you will get what you want. If your button heads against your boss, your boss wants to see you succeed. But if you care more about your boss's success than you do your own, your father in heaven who sees all that you do and all that you don't do will bless you. That's the key to prosperity is to focus on somebody else's prosperity first and yours will come as a direct result of theirs being there. My friends, you need to pray for your company presidents. You need to pray for your city councils. You need to ask God to bless the work of their hands because as that city prospers, so do you. Did anybody just catch that? How many of you have not done that? How many of you never even thought about it? Neither did I until I saw that. <laughs> that was a month ago. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Watch. If you're in business, you are affected by other people's businesses. That whoever you're going to do business with, that you pray that they prosper. Oh, Brenda, this is so big. You pray that those that do, oh, this is so big. How many of you are in a service type business? And how many of you are afraid that the economy is going to kill your business? Because your service business, right, is the first thing that they will cut out of their budget during a bad economy. How many of you have been fearful of this? How many of you thought that your product or your service, people are going to cut it out of their budget if the economy goes down? But if you pray for your clients and their prosperity, hello, if you seek the prosperity of your people, then shall you prosper. We're always seeking how can I further my career? How can I further my agenda? How can I build my business? How can I make my name great? No. The financial law here is, don't even think about yours. Worry about somebody else's and yours will come. My friends, I'm going to give you a concept that I, I talked about uh, months ago. It's called the funnel of favor. And it's huge. How many of you ever noticed there's certain people that, man, whatever they touch flourishes? It just turns to gold. And it's like, poof, there it is, right? How many of you have ever seen somebody like that? How many of you have ever had the opportunity to work under that funnel of favor? Let me, I will prove this to you scripturally. Egypt was blessed because of Joseph. Egypt was blessed because of Joseph. The Israelites were saved because of Joseph. He had a funnel of favor from God, a funnel of prosperity, and anyone that came anywhere near it was blessed. Your environment is everything. You better find a funnel of favor and stick close by them.